Lesson 3.6c, Assessing Reasonableness of Answers. Even if we understand how to solve a problem, we might make a careless solving error. We should always check our answer to make sure it's reasonable. If we need to add these mixed numbers, we know that 2 plus 3 plus 4 is 9, that means whatever this is equal to, because of the fraction parts, we know it's going to be greater than 9. That makes sense. If we add these mixed numbers and get a number that's less than 9, we know we made an error. When we add the fraction parts, giving them all 8 as a denominator, we end up with 2 eighths plus 4 eighths plus 1 eighth, which is 7 eighths, that means we have 9 and 7 eighths, and that is greater than 9. Common sense tells us this sum is going to be greater than 9, greater than the whole numbers added together. Emma is folding a 12-inch piece of construction paper in half to make a Father's Day card for her father. She wants to glue a three inch heart into the center of the front. How far from the left side and right side of the card should she place the heart? So we think, well, it's a 12 inch piece of construction paper that she folded in half. That means this is six inches and we have a three inch long heart. The front is six inches. The heart is three inches. That means we have three inches left for this side and this side of the heart. So now we can multiply this three inches by half. So we'll have half of the three inches on this side and half of the three inches on this side. We could also divide it by two. So we do three times a half which is 3 over 1 times 1 over 2. We multiply straight across, we get 3 halves. That means that the heart needs to be 1 and a half inches from each edge. So if this is 1 and a half, one and a half inches and this is 1 and a half inches, her heart will be directly in the center of the card. And we can check this. If we add 3 inches for the heart, and one and a half for the left side and one and a half for the right side, it equals six. So that's reasonable. Now, if you noticed, we said we can multiply three inches by a half or divide it by two. The reasoning is here we have our three and we're multiplying it by a half. When we get to this point, we have three divided by two. If we multiply a whole number by a unit fraction, so remember, unit fractions have one as a numerator. So we're multiplying a whole number by a unit fraction. It will produce the same answer as dividing that whole number by the denominator of that unit fraction. So 14 times a half is the same thing as 14 divided by 2. It's 7. If we have 24 times the unit fraction 1 third, it's going to be the same as 24 divided by 3. See? It's 8. If we multiply 12 times 2 thirds, we can look at this as 12 times 2 over a 3. We'll have 24 thirds, which is equal to 8. If we have 15 times 2 fifths, we can look at it as 15 times 2 over the 5. That's equal to 30 fifths. It's equal to 6. When we're multiplying by a unit fraction, because the numerator is a 1, if we did 14 times 1, it's still going to be 14. See? That's why we ended up with 14 halves here. And we would do 24 times the 1. It's going to keep its identity 24. That's why we have 24 thirds. Let's take a look at this one. Sam is hanging a picture. He wants to center it horizontally on the wall. The picture is 28 and a half inches long, and the wall is 96 and 3 fourths inches long. How far from each edge of the wall 
should Sam place the picture. First thing we do is we find the total length of the wall not covered by the picture. We can subtract the whole number parts, then subtract the fractional parts. We know the wall is 96 and 3 fourths inches and the picture is 28 and a half inches. We can do 96 minus the 28, we get 68. Now we do 3 fourths minus 1 half, we know that's 2 fourths. We're going to be left with 1 fourth, that's 68 and 1 fourth inches of the wall that is not covered by the picture. So if you need to draw a real quick drawing to help you do this, then do that. So here's the wall, here's the picture. So that means this area right here and this area right here totals 68 and 1 fourth inches. We find the length of the wall on each side of the picture. So now we need this separate from this. So technically, we're just dividing 68 and a fourth by 2, aren't we? And we can multiply it by 1 half. We have 1 half times 68 and 1 fourth. We have 1 half times 68, well that's 34, and 1 half times 1 fourth is 1 eighth. We have 34 and 1 eighth inches. So we know Sam should place the picture 38 and 1 or fourth inches from this edge to here and 34 and 1 8 inches from this edge to this side of the wall. So we know the picture is 28 and a half inches long. We know the wall is 96 and 3 fourths inches long and we know there's 34 and 1 8 inches from each edge of the wall to the picture. We can check our answer for reasonableness. The wall is about 97 inches. We can round this up to 97. And the picture is about 29 inches. The length of the wall space left for both sides of the picture is 97 minus 29, which is equal to 68 inches. That's an estimate because we rounded. The length left for each side is about half times 68, which is 34 inches. The answer, 34 and 1 eighth inches, is reasonable because it's close to our estimate of 34 inches. A 21 and a half minute video has two ads, each one and a half minutes long, and three equal length segments of funny cats. How long is each funny cat part of the video? The first thing we do is find the total length of the video that doesn't have ads. We have two ads, each one and a half minutes long. We can do the 21 and a half minute video minus the two ads that are one and a half minutes long. Two times one and a half is three. That means we have 21 and a half minus three. That's equal to 18 and a half minutes. Now we find the length of each funny cat segment because it wanted to know how long each funny cat part was. So we do 18 and a half times one third. We know there's three equal length segments. So technically we're dividing 18 and a half into three parts. So we can multiply it by a third. 18 multiplied by a third is a six and one half multiplied by a third is one six. We have six and one sixths minutes long. We can do 18 over 1 times 1 third. 18 times 1 is 18. 1 times 3 is 3. 18 thirds is 6. And 1 half times 1 third is 1 over 6. It's 1 six. See? We can check. Our video is about 21 minutes long. It's 21 and a half. We can say it's about 21 minutes long. The ads are about 3 minutes long. And 21 minus 3 is 18. 18 divided by 3 segments is 6 minutes for each segment, and 6 and 1 6 is close to 6, so it's reasonable. Mrs. Kim is baking 6 small and 8 large loaves of banana bread. She needs 1 third cup of brown sugar for each small loaf and 1 half cup for each large loaf. She has 6 and a half cups of brown sugar in a container. Does Mrs. Kim have enough? We find the total need that's needed for the six small loaves. She needs one-third cup for each small loaf, so we have one-third times six. 
One third times six is six thirds. That's two cups. Now we find the total needed for eight large loaves. We have one half cup for eight loaves. We have one half times eight, which is equal to eight halves, which is equal to four cups. She has six and a half cups of brown sugar in a container. If we add the two and four cups together and subtract it from the six and a half, we're going to end up with one half cup left over. So yes, she does have enough to make six small and eight large loaves. Our answer is reasonable because the total cups of brown sugar she needs to use is less than the quantity in the container. So it's important that you remember if a problem or equation contains fractions and decimals, we'll need to convert them to all fractions or all decimals before solving. If we have one half times six and twenty-five hundredths, we can convert the six and twenty-five hundredths to six and one-fourth. Then we can multiply and get three and one-eighth. We could also convert this one-half into five-tenths and then multiply. Just remember, if there are one, two, three decimal hops in the problem, there's going to be three decimal hops in the product. We'd end up with three and 125 thousandths, which is equal to three and one-eighth as a fraction. So a quick review for those of you who need it. If we have a whole number like eight times one-half, we can write the eight over a one to turn it into a fraction, and then we just multiply straight across. Then we do eight divided by two, which is four. Same with thing with nine times one-third. We can write the nine over a one, so it's like a fraction, and go straight across. We get nine-thirds, which is three. For ten times one-fifth, we can write it over one and get ten-fifths, which is equal to two. We can also do these as just eight times one over two and get eight halves, or nine times one over three and get nine-thirds, or ten times one over five and get ten-fifths. So we can quickly multiply a whole number to a fraction by just thinking the whole number times the numerator over the denominator. We're going to move on to 3.6d using rational numbers in any form. Keep trying your best, have a wonderful day, and join me for the next part of the lesson. Bye!